Hi there, I'm Anthony Giannis, sitting in for Van Tate. When New Mexico State star running back Denvis Manns wasn't drafted, many thought his playing days were over. But Dallas took a chance on Manns, and tonight he had a chance to show the team he's worthy in their preseason game with Oakland. Two nice 11-yard runs here, but he could have blocked better. He finished with 25 yards on 10 attempts. The Raiders win 10-3, but don't worry, Cowboy fans. Just because they haven't won a preseason game in two years doesn't mean a thing. Young Phenom facing real young Phenom in the finals of the PGA Championships. The two shaking hands before the round, Tiger Woods and 19-year-old Sergio Garcia. Woods shot an even par 72. Great putt here on 17 for par. Garcia was embraced by the galleries at Medina, but he misses the birdie putt to tie Tiger. Woods needed this short putt here on 18 to defeat Garcia by one stroke. Tiger shot an 11 under par to win his second major. Garcia a 10 under. Nick Price rounds out the top five. The Dukes got worked yesterday, but bounced back today, defeating the Edmonton Trappers 10 to 1. The Dukes hit five home runs. The Dukes parent club, the Dodgers, faced Atlanta in LA, and the old double steal got one for the Dodgers. They led two to nothing, but Brian Jordan had two dingers tonight to put the Braves ahead, and Atlanta wins in 11 innings, five to four. On to our NL board at St. Louis and Philly winning. Danny Romero logged his 30th career knockout last night, defeating Leonardo Choque Gutierrez in six rounds. Danny was the faster, smoother, and stronger fighter last night. Romero credits most of that to returning to his old fighting style and going down in weight to 118 pounds. I felt even a little ahead of myself. Romero will fight again next month in Phoenix and maybe face world champ Polly Ayala in December. Johnny Tapia lost his belt to Ayala in June, but is training in Rio Doso for a title fight in September or October. Johnny will challenge 118-pound WBO champ Julio El Cedar. Two enemies turn friends, Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero. In our Sunday night feature, we look at the history of the animosity turned respect. Hi there, I'm Anthony Giannis, sitting in for Van Tate. The Albuquerque Dukes have been hot, winning four of their last six games leading up to tonight's CBS 13 Fireworks Night. And our very own anchor and friend, Shelly Bruner, gets to throw out the first pitch. Shelly in a league of her own. The season's first sellout crowd on hand, taking in all of the action. Unfortunately for Dukes fans, the action belonged to the Sky Sox. Top of two, John Cotton ground rule double in the left, scores one, three one, Colorado. Now in the third, J.R. Phillips blowing up. The two-run dinger gives the visitors a 6-1 lead. The final, Colorado 13-8 over the Dukes. The Dukes will hit the road for the next two weeks. How do you say eloquently, what's up with the Dodgers? I can't say it, and it seems like they can't play it. San Francisco visiting L.A. You know it's bad when Kevin Brown starts a fire in the bullpen to chase away losing spirits, and it doesn't work. Nice. Third inning, Barry Bonds saying, We'll be riding wildfire tonight. The two-run shot puts the Giants up 4-1. to one. They go on to win 9-1. to one. On to our NL board at Baltimore at New York, and this is what kids dream of. Yankee Scott Brosh is up with two on, down by two runs in the ninth. Yeah, baby! This three-run shot is the game winner. The Yankees win 6-5. to five. It's the Orioles' 10th straight loss. It was only three years ago that American Lance Armstrong was diagnosed with testicular cancer that spread to his lungs and brain. Today, he is wearing the Tour de France yellow jersey. Armstrong said, today's stage eight was one of the greatest victories of my life. Armstrong completed the 34-mile course in one hour, eight minutes and 36 seconds. He now leads the race by more than two minutes over Frenchman Christophe Mouroud. Anthony, what have you seen? Man, I saw a parade, I saw a home run derby, and I saw the host team face a big, big challenge. And if the rest of the tournament is anything like day one, this is going to be an amazing World Series. And an interesting note with this host Farmington team, they've only made it to the finals once, and that was in 1977. Bill Williamson had the game winner. He's now the manager, and his son Tyson is on the team. Van? In the words of Yogi Berra, Anthony, do you like the Lobos' odds of winning another conference game tonight? Van, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say the Lobos are going to win this one, and here is why. Hawaii is not doing very well this year, and historically, here at the pit, the Rainbow Warriors are only two wins and 21 losses. 
Now Hawaii arrived last night and practiced here at the pit. They lost their WAC opener on Thursday to UTEP. Now because of the WAC breakup, this will be the last time the Rainbows come to the pit. But Hawaii says they're better than their record shows. We've just been having uh, you know, saying a lot of new guys. and Give it all that we have. Van is the st same starting lineup as on Thursday. Lamont Long will start. He says that strained calf muscle is just fine. Tip-off is 7 o'clock. Why has the course been winning so far? I will tell you why. In the 23-year history of this USGA National, this is the longest the course has ever been set up at 6,450 yards. Okay, give the ball to John. It's a sight we're used to seeing. Coach Don Flanagan teaching the fundamentals of basketball. Flanagan and his coaching staff donated their time to work with these kids from the Taos Pueblo. After the camp, Flanagan retreats to the Hondo River. The outdoors, an environment he loves as much as the court. Right in there, right next to the grass. There's a good cast. Come on, guys. I enjoy being by a river. It energizes me. It's a big contrast, you're right, from what I do for a living, but I enjoy this part. Flanagan has been fly fishing for 10 years. He's self-taught, and fishing provides an escape from the pressures of the college game. This is a side that I think is as important to me as basketball is. And I think probably because of this that I can get away, it makes me more effective when I go back to the court. That thing's going to catch him right there. That's the bug. Because of Coach Flanagan's schedule, he only gets to fish three weeks out of the year. And unfortunately for him, it's usually during the runoff. The wind's blowing about 70 miles an hour. And the water's rushing about 50. It's not as fun as July, August, September fishing. So, but that's the only thing that I have. But it's OK anyway, because I don't care about catching the fish. I just enjoy the hike, uh, the walk, and, and getting outside. On the court, Coach is an intense competitor who hates to lose. In the water, Flanagan is at peace. Anthony Giannis on the road, the Hondo River. She's called the Golden Girl. 16-year-old Stephanie Jaramillo has been boxing literally all her life. I picked boxing since I was little, little. Why well, I remember, my mom said I was boxer in her stomach. Mom now guides her daughter's career, and both will travel to Scranton, Pennsylvania on Sunday for the Women's National Championships. Stephanie is a 147-pound welterweight, ranked number two in the country. She says her big punches and big dreams will take her to the top. I want to be the youngest female champion in the world. That's what I want to, want to be. And I know I'm going to do that. She has a natural ability to be a boxer. She's going to do for female boxing what Michael Jordan did for basketball. And even though she's only 16 years old, Hadomio has a plan for life after boxing. I want to own the WIBF. I want to be the owner of it. I want to be a promoter and manager. I'm going to blow Don King away. She already has the hair for it. Right now, Stephanie is considering turning pro at 17. But whatever happens, Jaramillo believes she will be New Mexico's queen of the ring. Stephanie Jaramillo, our Amateur Athlete of the Week.
Governor Gary Johnson and state police are warning about drunken drivers as the 4th of July holiday approaches. So far this year, there have been 70 fatal crashes involving alcohol. You know, if you want to do something kind of special, is there any way we could call this something besides Frenching chicken? <laughs> um, that's the classical term for Frenching chicken. Uh, but um, you know, growing up in New Mexico all my life, you hear Frenching chicken, it's like something you just don't want to do. <laughs> something unsafe. Gary Lockwood of 2001 A Space Odyssey is the special guest for this year's festival. Roswell is hoping for about 15,000 visitors this weekend. You know what would get me out there would be David Duchovny, Gillian Anderson, Mitch Pileggi of The X-Files. That would be awesome. So you're not impressed by Gary Lockhart? Well, like, what's, well, <laughs> what's amazing about the whole Gary Lockhart thing is... When Art, the captain of the Gallup Police Department, found himself in a position he'd never been in before. Not only is he captain of the force, but he's also a childhood friend of accused cop killer Robert Cairo. We did start one earlier, but yours looks better than mine. Now, why is that? Because I'm a wonderful chef, right? You're a wonderful chef. That's what I'm talking on about. Your first All right. Chef, on your first chef. <laughs> so it looks like it's just a touch dry. So go okay. ahead and spin it with a little olive oil. Go just one more time, and that's good. Although you'll be paying more for sending a postcard while on vacation, the price to fill up your car with gas is going down. Energy Secretary Spencer Abraham is predicting there will be good news when his department releases new data today on how much you'll pay at the pump. He says the figures show prices are down about five cents a gallon from last week and 17 cents from their peak in May. That puts the national average at about a dollar fifty-four a gallon and that's what it was about last week here in Albuquerque and I filled up my car last night a dollar thirty-nine. Right, that's what I saw this morning I too. I was loving life. It was great. <laughs> it was so awesome. I saved five bucks. Five bucks on just that And it makes that a big drop. difference. It does. The Powerball jackpot is more than anyone first thought, and as Dr. Evil would say, it's up to a whopping $200 million, and New Mexico stores are packed with those who have dreams of winning it big. One man even spent $100 on tickets last night. And a reminder, you can see the Powerball drawing live here on KRQE News 13 at 9 o'clock, and we'll even have them again for you on News 13 at 10. It is now time to get all of your sports highlights. Here's Mike Powers with this morning's Sports Shorts. Anthony. Kim Martin Chavez has about eight weeks until he officially becomes mayor. That's on December 1st. He was up at the crack of dawn this morning already assembling his transition team to help him carry out his agenda. Now, last night, Martin Chavez won the election with 31% of the vote. Bob Schwartz finished with 27%. Chavez credits the win to running a positive campaign and having volunteers that never gave up. Chavez says he will assemble 100 people for his transition team. Some of those will be economists. He says his main focus early will be to work with the city budget because of the recent downturn in the economy. After that, he will zoom in on his agenda. We're going to go after the graffiti fire and police closer together. Chavez plans to start by hiring a new police chief. He says he will hire somebody already within the Albuquerque Police Department, and he will be conducting interviews with officers very soon. Kim, back to you. Now, Anthony Yanez with News 13 Sky Warm Weather. Good afternoon. I remember growing up here in New Mexico. Back when I was a little tiny kid, I would bring out 30 or 40 bucks, usually 20, because I didn't have that much money, come out to the fair, and all the people at the Midway would encourage you to play the games because there was no way you would lose. You would win a 3,000 pound stuffed animal for your girlfriend. And I blew my money all the time and never won a thing. However, now I spend that money on food because that is my favorite part of the fair. So pretty good chances for some weekend showers. Of course, we're all waiting for the fair, which is a little more than 20 days away, less than a month. So get ready for it because it's going to be an exciting time. Kim, back to you. We will. Best part, though, is the food, not losing the money on the games. Now, and you see, that's what I've learned now that I've gotten <laughs> older, so I've gotten smarter. Okay, thanks very much, Anthony. Right. If you would like to pitch in, you can drop off donations at any Bank of America location in New Mexico, and you can also log on to krqe.com for more information. 14-year-old Cody Unser has met her share of famous people, but Wednesday, she met President Bush, and she says he's definitely her favorite. That's because Bush may have given her a gift that will help her walk again. Cody Unser couldn't contain her excitement on Wednesday. She would meet the President of the United States and thank him for moving ahead on stem cell research. She was paralyzed two years ago by transverse myelitis, which is a rare spinal cord disease. I'm missing the myelin on my spinal cord. And what um, the researchers have been able to find is that the stem cells will be able to, um, you know, create themselves to be myelin and go regenerate the whole spinal cord. 
Cody hopes the research will provide a cure for her disease, allowing her to walk again. She encouraged Senator Pete Domenici to move ahead with the research, and that got the attention of the president. I wanted to be here to thank him for um, his decision on stem cell research. And, um, you know, he said, what a quite fun, fine young lady you are, and um, I'm pleased to meet you and everything like that. And he was he's so cool. He was really nice. She originally hoped Bush would allow unlimited research, but says the compromise he made is acceptable. There had to be some kind of restrictions because it's, it's, it's a difficult issue, and he made the right one. And so I'm very thankful, and we should all have our prayer of thanks for him. Cody has a website dedicated to fighting transverse myelitis. It is called Cody's First Step Foundation. You can find it on our website at krqe.com. The conditions out here are so crazy, it's knocked out our audio. And right now, I'll tell you, we are live in Cedillo in the East Mountains, where just recently sleet has started to mix with the snow and with the wind blowing as it is. It actually hurts to be out here with the sleet coming in and hitting you in the face in all directions. It just it really takes your breath away. And for many of us, we dreamed of having a white Christmas, but it's turned into a nightmare if we have to drive in it. Art, I just finished watching this tape, and what I can tell you is that it is filled with fireworks as the rank and file rip into police chief Jerry Galvin. Art, Matthew Prop showed up in a New York courtroom to support the man he always believed to be his father. In a strange twist, he sat next to his biological father, who's been looking for him for more than two decades. Kathy, 14 elementary, mid, and high schools have been competing for eight weeks. Each class gets 10,000 imaginary dollars to invest any way that they want to. This is an exercise where the kids profit from the lesson, even if there's no profit. You lost a lot of money. That's what one fourth grader at Colette Park Elementary said after looking at the imaginary stock portfolio put together by her class. You're writing down the abbreviation. You're writing down the number of shares, which has not changed. Karen Shepke is helping her students close out their accounts. The competition is almost over, and not one of her six classes has made any money. Minus. The stock market has never been this low. Usually we have kids that are gaining uh, money by the end, and this year all of my groups are at a loss. The competition is designed to show the students what investing in the real world is like. Students use the newspaper as a guide. The group decides each day what stocks they want to buy, sell, or hold. The fourth graders call themselves SOS, and they do need the help. SOS stands for Save Our Stocks. The group has lost almost $1,300, theoretically. Uh, stocks go up and stocks go down, and it's really bad. Most of all, we've lost money. We haven't exactly gained any money. Uh -oh. The loss mirrors other schools' results. This may be the first year that the winner of this competition is actually a loser when it comes to making money. Now, right now, Montezuma Elementary School is leading the competition, but La Cueva High is boasting about a stock pick that jumped from $2 a share to 5 if that holds, they may be your winner.